Alright my dear Leica fangirls and fanboys, welcome back to my channel for a super exciting video about the new Leica M11 monochrome and many thanks to my friends from Leica Zurich and Leica Switzerland who gave this camera already early March to me for free to just test it out, becoming familiar with the new Leica M11 monochrome sensor, shooting it, looking into dynamic range, looking into sharpness and all of that. And of course, I'll also quickly compare it with the Leica M11, which is a color sensor. And since you will ask that in the comments anyway, I will of course also quickly compare the new Leica M11 monochrome with the Leica M10 monochrome to give you some data points on these two cameras. Let's kick off the video. All right, let's not waste time, let's get right into the topic. First of all, the battery system of the M11 Mono is of course the same as the one on the Leica M11. I have here a freshly charged battery that will find its way into the camera body in a moment. I also have a formatted SD card here that's from the Tough series from Sony. Super robust cards, very fast transfer rates in terms of reading and writing data and I have a capacity here of 128 gigabytes. So let's insert this into the camera here. Let's get the battery in, let's switch the camera on and I guess we will see now some little animation like always on these type of rangefinder cameras. Here we go, beautiful. Leica just has style as every Leica fanboy and fangirl on my channel will agree. And I guess we have to set the language now. Let's see, yes, we go for English. We skip for a moment the Leica Photos app. I will make a comment in the course of the video on that. The time zone is correct. Daylight saving time is off at this point in time. Day month year is fine for me. We have today the 4th of March. So let's go here to four and to March 2023 is okay. We keep the 24 hours. We have now 21, so it's 9 p.m. And let me quickly check my watch here. It's actually 31 here. So we have here 31 and then we are good to go. All right, camera is ready. Let's push the menu button. Let's go to live view. So we see something here and the menu system is exactly the same as on the Leica M11 with a few deviations of the scheme. For instance, here we have a shortcut to styles on the black and white or monochrome appearance. And there are a few differences, but in general, these are essentially the same cameras. If you look at the Leica M11 here and put them side by side, the main difference is that we have on the Leica M11 a sensor with a color filter and that color filter has been removed on the Leica M11 monochrome and that of course gives you reserves in terms of information stored because on the color filter you need values for RGB, red, green and blue. This you don't need on a monochrome camera so you have more information to store, more capacity for tonality, shadows, light and so on. And that of course gives you an advantage. It gives you an advantage in dynamic range on the monochrome sensor. And it also creates what I like to call deeper pixels because you don't have the color information. You can actually easily print images from a monochrome camera here with a monochrome sensor at at least 200% magnification. So no problem at all. But we'll look into all of that in the course of the video. I typically don't use a shoulder strap on my Leica M rangefinder cameras. And that's why I always use the hand grip. The hand grip gives me a very firm grip. It sits firmly in my hand. The camera cannot accidentally slip out of my hands. And the hand grip of the Leica M11, of course, can also be used on the Leica M11 monochrome. So I have one here. Let's mount this quickly. 
Here is the hand grip. Let's put it on. Let's screw it firmly so that it sits on the camera body. And then we have here that functional hand grip, which has an opening here. And that's rubber material, so you have quick access to the battery compartment and also, of course, quick access then to the SD card, which is very nice. That you don't have on the Leica M10 design, which is still the classical rangefinder design. So here, if you look at the Leica M10 monochrome, we have a one-piece bottom plate here and we have to unmount the hand grip before we get access to the battery and the SD card. So that's the difference. And you know, people debated a lot in the web if they like the new design of the Leica M11 compared to the Leica M10R and the M10P and the M10 Mono, of course. But I think this design, after you use it for a while, really plays back because quick access to the battery compartment and to the SD card is an advantage, of course. Speaking about differences between the Leica M10 Mono and the new Leica M11 Mono, clearly here we have the classical M10 design. Here we have the new M11 design and that's also, of course, in the menu system and in the functionality of the camera. So this is the classic camera. This is the more modern camera. The debate in the web when the Leica M11 was introduced continued for a while, but I think now everyone is familiar with that new design, the new menu system, which is very close to the Leica SL menu system and the Leica Q2 menu system. And I personally prefer the new design, although I'm still shooting my Leica M10R. And we'll later compare a sample image between this camera here, the M10 Mono, and the M11 Mono. And uh, you know, the conclusion will very likely be if you want to have the best of the best, then the M11 is what you should go for. But the M10 Mono is really not ready for retirement. It's an absolutely fantastic camera with a superb image quality. Let's now quickly set up the Leica M10 Mono because I want to shoot it in a moment. So let's switch it on. And uh, let's see here what we have. LCD is just booting up. Here we go. Let's look into the menu and let's do the most essential settings, which I typically do if I take a camera like this out of box. So let's go here into lens detection. Auto is fine. Drive mode is single for the time being. Exposure metering, I like center weighted here. Then we go to exposure compensation, we leave it. ISO value, I would set here on the manual side to the base ISO, which is 125. By the way, there's also a difference between the M11 Mono and the M10 Mono because on the M10 Mono, the base ISO is 160. Here it's 125. Then we have auto ISO settings. Now the maximum ISO you can easily boost up here because that camera can shoot at high ISO values and still have no significant noise. So let's go here to something like 12,500. I think that's good. Shutter speed limit, I want to have one over two times the focal length. So let's go here to one over two F. Then uh, this is good here the same. One over two F is what I want. Then let's continue here. I think we can go back. Let's go to toning that I leave for the time being at off, but you can choose here CPR weak, CPR strong, blue weak and so on. That means you have certain filters. That's how I would call it for your black and white appearance in the images. Let's go back here. Then we have file format. I want to have DNG, so RAW and JPEG. That's good. DNG resolution, that's a novum on the M11 system. We take this on 60 megapixel, of course. JPEG setting, also large, that's fine. We keep that. Let's go here to auto review. I want to have this on permanent. And then we have noise reduction on. That's actually very convenient on former Leica rangefinder cameras. You never could switch off noise reduction. And that's just annoying. Here you can do it. Shutter type, I want to have hybrid because then I can go to very fast shutter speeds with the uh, electronic shutter, of course. Let's go to flash. We can skip this. Digital zoom, I don't want to have perspective control. I will put on a function button in a moment because that is a feature I use very often. You will see this in my sample images later on. Custom control. Favorites I can edit later and uh, I think here we are good to go. Keep this all on. We have Capture Assistant. Here we have the Info Profiles. Let's go here to the first one. We want to have the Info Bars, no crits, no clipping. I want to have Focus Peaking. That's fine. Histogram I switch off and we are good to go. Let's go back. Let's go to Profile number two. First of all, we switch this on. And then we have here Grids off. We have everything off. I think that's good. So we can later toggle through this. Then we have a third one here. Here I want to have the Level Meter. So we have info bars on, 
then we go here to level gorge we take this on on and i think that's it so i need three profiles means if i'm here on shooting let me actually open the lens here so we see something let's see what we have here auto iso auto shutter speed let's focus this quickly let's go here in that's fine for the time being. Now I can toggle through my info profiles I just set up. So here we have the two info bars and focus peaking. Here we have the focus peaking removed. Then we have the level gorge here. And then here we have basically the full image visible. And then we come back to the first info profile. And that's exactly what I wanted. Let's go back here. Capture assistance. What else do we have? Exposure preview. I want to have permanent. Then we have focus aid. Automatic I think is fine. Let's go to user profile here. We don't do that at this point in time. Display settings, that's all good. Like our photos, we do later. Storage management is important. So I want to have DNG on both and JPEG on both. That means we go here to DNG and JPEG on internal memory as well as on the SD card because that creates a backup. And if once in a while my SD card would break down, I still have all images in the internal memory. That's exactly what I want. Backup memory, here you have it. That's just if I manually want to copy from A to B. No need to do that. Power saving mode, I want to have camera standby at 10 minutes and display standby at 5 minutes. Also good. Reset camera we don't need. And by the way, on the firmware and then we are done. That was a very quick run through. We have currently here a pre-sale firmware or pre-production firmware. So very likely the firmware you will see when you purchase this camera will be a different one because we are, as I said, at the beginning of the video, now at the beginning of March. I want to do two more customizations before I go and shoot. And for this, I press and hold this function button here. And then I can choose what I want. And I want to have here quick access to perspective control, which is here, I think, somewhere down here it is perspective control and now if i push that button i get perspective control which i have a separate video on you can look this up on my channel if i push the button again perspective control is gone and what i also want to have is i want to have the self timer on the function button and the reason is i have quick access here on drive mode of course but then I have to swipe and to swipe and then I have my self timer here. I want to have this on a function button because that's something I use very often. Let's go back here to single shooting mode. So I push and hold the function button and then we scroll down here to self timer. And now whenever I push the FN button, I can here choose my self timer between two seconds and 12 seconds and that's very convenient for me. These are the only further customizations I will do. I will later also set up the favorites menu and a few other tweaks like the focus peaking color and so on. But now I'm just curious to go out and shoot. But before, let's quickly contemplate why black and white. Why not just shooting all images with the Leica M11 where the color filter sits on the sensor and if you get in a mood for black and white, converting it via Silver FX, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, what have you, into a monochrome black and white image. Why are people so excited about shooting with a monochrome sensor only where no color filter is on top of the sensor and you don't get any color information? And in order to answer that question, I want to show a few sample images and I've shot them all with my all times favorite lens, the Leica Aposumicron M 35mm f2.0. So here's my little essay, why black and white? Before color film became popular, all photography was in black and white. That's why in our perception, when we see black and white photos, it always triggers memories to pictures taken many years back, say, sometimes decades back, of course. If you go to Leica's website, The Legend Lives On, 100 Years of Leica Photography, you actually find a lot of iconic photos taken in black and white from different phases in history. For instance, that famous portrait from Che Guevara taken by Alberto Corda in 1960, or here, the flood in Wetzlar, which was one of the earliest images with 35 mm, because Oskar Banach, who took that photo in Wetzlar, Germany, actually invented 35 mm film. If you scroll down here, we find that very famous picture about the naked girl napalm attack in Vietnam, taken by Nick Uth in 1972. We find the very famous fist of Muhammad Ali, taken by Thomas Höpker in the year 1966, and so on. Black and white photography reduces images back to the essential of a scene. Since the color dimension is missing, the viewer of a black and white photo focuses on the essential information in the scene. For instance, where was the photo taken? What's the location? What's the story underlying the image? What happened back then when the photo was taken? 
Or what's the relationship between the photographer and people maybe in the scene? What's the underlying motivation for the photographer to shoot just that particular scene and not something else and so on. Generally, I think monochrome images have a classy look with a nuance of legacy times flavor. Black and white photography reduces a scene to just light, shadows, tonality, contrast and so on. In addition, Leica's monochrome sensors provide generally more dynamic range and greater sharpness than comparable color sensors. In a video some time back, I compared the 40 megapixel Leica M10 mono sensor with a 150 megapixel phase one IQ4 digital back sensor. And in terms of sharpness, the M10 mono came really close. The reason for that is that monochrome sensors in pixels don't need the usual RGB information standing for red, green, and blue. And that means that you can basically multiply the native resolution of a monochrome sensor by a multiple of three. So 40 megapixel in the M10 mono compares give or take to 120 megapixel in a color sensor when it comes to sharpness. That of course means that the 60 megapixel native resolution Solution we have here in the new Leica M11 monochrome can be magnified up to 300% which enables of course huge print dimensions of black and white images. I also posted some time back a video where I compared images coming from the native monochrome sensor of the Leica Q2 monochrome with color images coming from the standard Leica Q2 after black and white conversion which is the topic I mentioned earlier in the video and the conclusion is that it is just not the same. And it is again the dynamic range but also the native sharpness where the Q2 monochrome sensor is just superior to Q2 color images converted into black and white. All these arguments suggest to pro photographers, of course also to photo enthusiasts, to shoot black and white images with a true monochrome sensor and not shooting in color and then converting into black and white later in post-processing. All right, so what lenses did I shoot on the new Leica M11 monochrome? And first of all, this is a lens I'm going to shoot going forward. That's the Summicron M 28mm f2.0. I like this lens a lot. I did shoot it on other Leica rangefinder cameras and this is a lens I definitely want to shoot on the new M11 mono. But for this video here, I did shoot first of all the Apple Summicron 35mm f2.0, which I mentioned already and you also saw already images shot with that lens on the M11 mono sensor in the slideshow earlier in the video. Another lens I did shoot was the Sumilux M widest open f1.4 21 millimeter wide angle. That's an absolutely brilliant lens and I did shoot with that lens in particular night scenes not only with the M11 mono but also with the M10 mono in order to give you at least one image comparison side by side and also with the Leica M11 with the color sensor. So you will see this in a moment when we look into sample images. By the way, when we come to sample images shot with the Sumilux 21 f1.4, I used on two frames a neutral density filter. And the way to get a neutral density filter on that lens is by purchasing the filter carrier from Leica here for a filter thread of 82 millimeter. And then I used the neutral density filter in order to get the water in the foreground on River Limmat in Zurich more calm, more silky, more peaceful. Another area of photography I wanted to cover with the new Leica M11 mono is people photography. And there are two lenses I used for that. The first one is the Noctilux M 50mm f1.2. It's the newest family member of the Noctilux M 50mm lens family and it just produces perfect images on the M11 mono sensor. And the last lens I shot is this lens here and that's the Noctilux M 75 millimeter widest open f 1.25 and I reviewed this lens in the same way as the Noctilux M 50 millimeter on my channel. Both are absolutely fantastic lenses and deliver the best of the best in terms of image quality on the Leica M11 monochrome. Let's now go into sample images. I want to show a lot of images because I did shoot with four different lenses and let's see what this new Leica M11 monochrome is capable of if combined with these wonderful, terrific Leica M lenses. Here are now some sample images with the new Leica M11 monochrome and my favorite lens in the Leica M lens lineup, the Aposumicron M35 f2.0. And what I wanted to point out in this image here, although you've seen the next few images already in the slideshow, is the incredible amount of sharpness and how crisp these images are. Look at that, it's a very shallow depth of field. So this image was shot widest open with f2.0, but you get all the details in that image and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Same here, a scene in Zurich, no people around. And uh, you see here, everything is absolutely sharp and crisp. Nothing to complain, same here, a really good image. And of course has this 
almost vintage type look which you get from black and white photography. Here in portrait orientation, a building in Zurich with someone looking out of the window, smiling at the photographer, thinking what is this guy doing in front of my apartment here. Here we have a church. Again, this is perspective controlled here. I uh, put the perspective control as a function on the function button as I showed earlier in the video and uh, the camera automatically calculates the right perspective control in Lightroom here and has this information in the metadata and look here how sharp and crisp this image is. Same here, here the image if I switch off perspective control just pointing to these buildings and here the automatic perspective control which I have on my custom button which is very nice of course. Here another image at River Limmat in Zurich, very sharp, very crisp. This is incredible. If you look here at the moon in the background, you even see here the structure of the moon. If you look carefully, that is all coming from the incredible amount of detail this Leica M11 monochrome sensor is delivering here. The big church here in the background, lots of details in the scene again, very nice. Same here, different perspective. Here the bridge over River Limmat, people crossing the bridge. Again, super sharp, many details we find in the images. Here again, the moon. And again, a little bit of structure even from the surface of the moon here. And so on and so on. That's all the images with the Aposumicron M, 35 millimeter. That is one of the sharpest lenses you get in the Leica M lens lineup. And clearly in combination with the M11 mono sensor, it gives you the best image quality you can think of. Here is now the quick comparison, which I promised at the beginning of the video between the night scene shot with the Leica M10 monochrome on the left hand side and the Leica M11 monochrome on the right hand side. And as just mentioned before, I was shooting this night scene with a wide angle lens, the Sumilux M 21 mm f 1.4. Exposure time here is about comparable, 32 seconds dictated by the grid of exposure times on the left hand side on the Leica M10 mono and 30 seconds on the Leica M11 mono on the right hand side. And I did shoot both images with the base ISO of the respective cameras, left hand side M10 mono, ISO 160, right hand side ISO 125. And if we crop in into these images, let's start with the building on the left hand side here. Then these images are comparable to some extent. Both images are super sharp and super crisp. You can read here the letters on these shops in the background, but you get of course more details on the right hand side on the M11 mono based on 60 megapixel images. And that is a pattern which is kind of consistent throughout the image. Let's go here to the bridge in the middle of the scene. And if we crop in here by 100%, clearly you get more details now on the right hand side. So what does that mean for you if you are a mono shooter and own a Leica M10? As I said at the beginning of the video, if you love the new design of the Leica M11 cameras, which I personally prefer, then the M11 is a good upgrade for you. If you are just a mono shooter who is still in love with the old design and you don't care about 20 megapixel more, then the M10 mono is a camera which you should under no circumstances leave and retire. Let's look here to something more close. Clearly you see more details now on the right hand side again, but the left hand side is really good and there is nothing to complain about the Leica M10 monochrome. So still way off too early to retire that camera. Let's look here at this building and uh, I think consistently we see the same. The level of sharpness is incredibly high in both images. The M11 mono just delivers more. You also see some stars here in the night sky a little bit and uh, that is also nice of course. And in general I think that concludes my comparison between the M10 mono and the M11 mono. If you want more details, more megapixel, the more modern design, the battery compartment, the hand grip, which is flexible and can be opened for easy access to the cart and to the battery, then the M11 is for you when it comes to monochrome shooting. If you don't really care about that, stay with your M10 mono. You're always on the safe side with this wonderful little camera. Here now my comparison between the Leica M11 mono on the left hand side and the Leica M11 in color on the right hand side. Exposure time is the same on both images. 30 seconds and ISO is 125 on both images chosen because it's the base ISO of the Leica M11 monochrome. Now if we crop into these images, let's start with the building. Both images are very crisp and very sharp. You see a lot of details in these images. 
In my opinion, my subjective view, the M11 Mono is a tiny little bit more tech sharp than what you have on the right hand side on the M11 with a color sensor. But in general, both images are in a way that I like them. It all boils down to what I said in my little essay about monochrome shooting with a native monochrome sensor. If you want that last tiny little bit additional sharpness, if you don't care about color, if you want the best dynamic range you can get on a camera, then go for a native monochrome sensor because that's what you see here. It's just the best of the best. Looking at the church, I think you also see here, if you compare on the left-hand side, just a tiny little bit more details than what you have on the right-hand side. But in general, both are good images. By the way, I did shoot both scenes with the Leica M11 and the M11 monochrome, also with a neutral density filter. So here's on the left-hand side, the 30-second exposure you just saw, and on the right-hand side, a 200-second exposure, and that just makes the water a bit more smooth, calm, and silky. Let's have a look here and you see the difference from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. It just looks a bit more peaceful if you use a neutral density filter for water. And here, by the way, on the left-hand side, on the 30-second exposure, we also have some nice light trails on the bridge, and also here some light trails from a plane flying over Zurich City. Here the same story now, same scene with the Leica M11 monochrome, left-hand side, the 30-second exposure we saw before, right-hand side, 200 seconds with neutral density filter. And again, the water, becomes more silky, more peaceful, more calm. I like shooting water with neutral density filters because it just gives the scene an even more peaceful impression. So here I did exactly the same with the M11 Mono, what I did before with the Leica M11. Here now a quick excursion into dynamic range as promised at the beginning of the video. This image here on the left hand side is heavily underexposed, exposed to the left. Only a three second exposure, so more than three stops away from the correct exposure we saw before which was about 30 seconds. And I could easily correct this in Lightroom. So on the left-hand side is before post-processing, on the right-hand side is after exposure correction in Lightroom. And if I crop in here by 100%, this is as crisp, sharp, and nicely exposed as all the other images we saw before. Absolutely no problem. And that's of course very useful to know because that means you can shoot handhold by using a faster shutter speed and having then an underexposed image later correcting this in post in Lightroom. And in this way, maybe you can avoid using a tripod in a night scene or low light scene. And uh, the level of detail, the information which is sucked in by this M11 monochrome sensor is just absolutely phenomenal. Here now an image of Stephanie shot with the Noctilux M 50 millimeter F 1.2. Again, of course, on the M11 monochrome, that's what this video is about. And uh, nicely rendered. I mean, the Noctilux M 50 millimeter 1.2 is a very sharp lens. But if I crop in here by 100%, so much detail in the face of Stephanie, very nice. And in general, as just mentioned, people, photography, portraits, half body shots, full body shots with an M monochrome sensor is just very, very nice and beautiful. I like a lot what I'm seeing here. Here a half body shot of Stephanie. And uh, you know, if it comes to people photography, people are obsessed by the rule of thirds or having the eye in the center of the golden spiral connected to the golden ratio. I think actually here, and you see this also in many other portraits, you find with pro photographers, it's nice to have the model in the middle of the scene because you see how busy the background is with lots of other people and the model is just in the center and basically directing the view of the one who is looking at the photo directly to the model. Here, the aperture was wide open on the Noctilux 50 millimeter. Here I stopped down a bit and then you still have a blurry background but you get a bit more details in the image. And again, if I crop in by 100% into Stephanie's face here, super crisp, super sharp, exactly what I expect from a Noctilux lens on a Leica M monochrome sensor, in this case on the M11 with 60 megapixel. Very good image, very nice. For this particular image of Stephanie, I replaced the Noctilux M50 f1.2 by the Noctilux M75 mm f1.25. And intentionally, I had Stephanie here in the middle of the frame because if you look at the screen on the right hand side, there is wide open space and uh, you get this indicated despite a very soft, very creamy background bouquet. And on the left hand side, there is a wall where Stephanie was standing. And I did shoot this image widest open at f1.25. And if I crop in here to 100%, you see how well this is rendered. Just a perfect image. The eyes are crystal clear, the eyelashes. Everything is there, the details on the lips, a very beautiful image of Stephanie. And as I said before, I'm repeating myself, 
black and white people photography is always super beautiful but if you do it with a native monochrome sensor like the one here from the m11 you get the best of the best here a shot of stephanie which i would say is between a half body shot and a full body shot there is some light here at the upper side of the stairs which i like to come in here and again if i crop in here by 100 percent this is super sharp super crisp look here how many details you get at stephanie very nice let's scroll to another image let me see here this is another one which i think is well done very crisp very sharp let's go further here what else do we have i think this one i like in particular cropping in here very nice lots of details this is already cropped in before because i wanted to have just the structure of the stairs in the background no distraction on the boundaries of the frame in general i think this noctilux 75 millimeter is a dream combo with the Leica M11 monochrome sensor and for beauty shootings, for people, reportage, street, what have you, you will love this lens on this new M11 sensor. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to say in my introductory video on the new Leica M11 monochrome. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. And independent of whether you are in people photography or you are in architecture, street, you know, travel photography, what have you, black and white monochrome is just beautiful. And if you wanna have the best of the best in terms of image quality, dynamic range, you know, sharpness, then go for the Leica M11 monochrome because that sets the new standard for black and white photography. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy, and of course, peace out.